Hidden Gems of DFW is a video podcast to help marketing professionals as well as newbies learn the art of marketing and finding the treasures that help a small business grow. This podcast will be filled with gems and treasures in the DFW area from some of the best guests in the business. And even if you are not in the DFW area, these treasures will work for you. And now get ready for the Hidden Gems of DFW podcast with Chris O'Connor. Hi, everyone. I am Chris O'Connor, your host of Hidden Gems of DFW. And we are doing a video podcast today. And I'm telling you, I am so, so, so excited to have my guest today. I've known this individual for over 10 years. He probably doesn't know this, but he's one of my mentors that I follow almost everywhere. And I told him I got mad at him because he went to Colorado because now I don't get to see him on a monthly basis and pick his mind on how to grow a business and what to do. But he is one of the pioneers, I think, of SEO before SEO was even SEO. Who is that? It is Bill Hartzer and from Hartzer Consulting. And he moved away to Colorado, but he was so gracious to come on my podcast today. I am so very excited. Welcome, Bill. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, I think I'm, you know, I'm still, uh, I've been in DFW in the Dallas area for, you know, for 25 years. And I think that, you know, I still will have that, uh, uh, the DFW area as my home and, and um, definitely be coming back as, as, uh, you know, back into the, into the area as, uh, as often as I can. That's exciting. That's really exciting news um, because we miss you. We All of us miss you. We missed you at State of Search. We miss you at the meetings. We miss your um, your knowledge. I mean, we just miss you sure. in person. And uh, the one thing that I know about Bill is Bill loves to share and he loves to help. And that's what I want to do is I want to learn as much as he does and help you as a business owner grow your business. But first of all, I want Bill to tell his story a little bit, you know, where he came from and, you know, when SEO wasn't SEO, what he did and kind of tell us a little bit of your background, Bill. Sure. So um, I really come from a kind of a, I would say, technical writing background where I wrote wrote computer software manuals um, and when kind of the internet was kind of getting getting started and, you know, so the kind of, So that was actually, you know, helpful for me because a lot of the, you know, before it was actually, it was, it was, let's see, 1995, 96 and so forth when we really didn't have the pleasure, I'd say the pleasure of using sites like Word, you know, uh, tools like WordPress and even Microsoft Word. We made something, uh, you know, um, bold and italic and so forth. We actually had to code and, you know, code the italic uh, code around each word that we wanted to be italics. I mean, it was very, you know, rudimentary, very, uh, very simple and cr- even creating websites. You know, we had to actually code this HTML code and, you know, we didn't have something where we could just go in, type some text and hit save and publish and it would be live on the web. There was a lot more involved. And so that really, Using that expertise, you know, I I uh, I learned that HTML, and so started to create some web pages, uh, and then kind of grew into as I, you know, the different co- you know the companies and and so forth that I worked for allowed me to get a little bit more involved in websites and 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 the technology behind websites, and so kind of on the side, I you know I started a you know a side gig business um, where. I basically gathered resumes and I had this website, hotresume.com that, uh, that basically was a resume database. And so I created the website and so forth. And from there, you know, uh, I wanted to get the traffic. I wanted to get, you know, visitors. And so it was, you know, the search engines of the day, you know, back in the, between 1996 and, you know, um, and, and kind of the, uh, uh, you know, the, in 2000, it was Alta Vista and Excite and and so forth. Uh, those were the big search engines, and so we would actually really just create web pages and 
uh, essentially write some text at the, you know, at the basic level, you know, a lot of the HTML code uh, we still use today, the majority of it, and things like, you know, just putting your keyword in a title tag and mentioning it on the page, you know, and, and, and certain, a certain number of times on the page. So that's how the search and those search engines uh, figured out your, your content and you would rank and you could get all these, you know, all clicks and traffic and, and so forth. So that was actually very, you know, very, uh, you know, helpful in understanding the bait, you know, the basics and how the, the internet works and, um, you know, how you create web pages. And so then obviously um, Google came around, um, around, you know, early 2000s and, and so they were looking at links from websites and, and other different ranking factors. And, you know, you want to had more, um, it was basically a popularity contest. And so that grew into me learning a lot more and, and creating, you know, web pages and websites and the telecom software company that I worked for, um, basically transmission, tra you know, transitioned me into a role from, Right, you know, writing uh, about their software to actually helping and and uh, on the website and you know and getting traffic and leads and sales, um, you know, through the internet. And so that kind of evolved. I was I was doing at that time. I was doing SEO or you know optimizing um, you know web websites in nine different languages. And so that gave me a lot of you know, skills that, um, and understanding, you know, of, of, of um, SEO and so forth. And from there in, it was, um, I was in-house at a, you know, uh, you know, in-house marketer and so forth. And then I got, a, you know, con got convinced to go out to um, some, you know, an agency and then, and, and work and so forth. That was around the time when um, a fellow named, um, um, Jim Gilbert and I were, were talking about just networking more in the Dallas area with other people who did, you know, optimization and so forth and SEO. And I don't even think it, you know, it was, re wasn't really called SEO. It was, you know, search engine marketing. And so that's why we kind of started the, uh, we got a group, group, group together, um, uh, met at, you know, one evening for dinner and basically started the, the Dallas Search Engine Marketing Association, and so at that time it was search engine marketing. I mean, it was, it was uh, now that's kind of grown into a, uh, you know, a different phrase. Search engine marketing meaning pay per click and so forth, and and you know, and advertising, whereas SEO is you know search engine optimization and getting the free traffic to your website. So basically, you know, it, it's interesting because. As I look back at, you know, from doing SEO or doing optimization to get, you know, to, to get listed in the search engines back in 1996 and 97, compare that to today what we're doing, it really is not a lot of, there's not a lot of difference. I mean, it's, it's, uh, we went from, you know, if anybody really kind of follows SEO and, and the ranking factors of, you know, what you need, in, you know, to rank in the search engines uh, and the search engine results, you know, for free, it used to, you know, we, it used to be all about everything, you know, and how you massage your website and your content and the pages. And then it, a lot of it, Google came around and they wanted links. They wanted to see links from other websites, but now we're back in this area where you know, you can really now create a page on your website and it can do well and show up in the search results um, just by coding it properly and making it, you know, um, making sure that there's no errors and, and using the keywords, you know, like you need, you know, like you need to. Now we have additional code like schema markup and all these other, you know, code that we can add, but it's still now, you know, like I said, it's, it's, uh, we're back to square one where we're optimizing our web pages. And, you know, for me, it, it makes, it makes, you know, um, optimization fun again, because of the fact that 
you can act, you don't have to go out and get some other website to link to you, which sometimes can be difficult, you know, and, and so forth. And so now we can just massage our web pages, make sure everything is is technically correct. And, and um, you know, the search engines will send us visitors and traffic for that. Yeah, I, you know, I, um, I first met you at a, I think it was Steve Kunson uh, group way back in the day, and you used my yeah, website. Yeah, Steve Kunson had a, um, a group, a DFW SEO, yeah. which was, um, and, and, uh, and you was did a little a, bit different. Um, you did a live um, yep. evaluation of our website <laughs> yep. and killed me. <laughs> But that was back before I took care of it, and I did any of it. But I learned so much from that evaluation. I don't remember. Did you use Majestic? No, uh, Spider, uh, SEO Spider, Yeah, right? there's different, you know, probably the Screaming Frog SEO Spider has mm -hmm. been around, and there's been different callers. Uh, you know, there's looking at the links. We have, you know, Majestic.com that looks at all the links to your website and the pages and so forth. Um those were the main, you know, kind of the beginning tools that have been around for. Yeah, for quite a while. and I'll never forget um, the the two things that stuck out to me most is that we used the word "you and your" too much, which I thought was really interesting. So, you know, looking back, and that has always stuck in my mind. So, if I'm working on, you know, of course, when I was working on that website, I made sure I didn't have a lot of "you and yours" in there and um, made it more valuable for the reader, right? So sure. um, I want to keep talking with you, but we got to take a quick break here, and uh, we're going to learn some tips that uh, can help you grow your business and maybe some things to look at on your website, or if you don't take care of your website, things you can ask your agency who does take care of your website. So we will be right back. Hi, this is Bill Hartzer. I'm putting on my official FBI hat here to do an investigation because I'm doing an investigation right now of a company and that company's name. And what I'm looking at is the search results of that company's name when I do a search. Um, when I do a search at Google, when I do a search at Bing.com, and one of the, you know, or even Yahoo.com. I want to see what search results are showing up and also I want to search for the website name as well to make sure there's no pages or information that should not be indexed in the search engines. Hi everyone, we are back with Bill Hartzer from Hartzer Consulting. I am just so excited to have him here today. Um, I've known him for over 10 years, I listened to him. I love what he has to say. I love implementing and watching it do exactly what he tells me it's going to do. And so that's why I wanted to have him on today because we're about ready to get going into 2022. Hard to believe 2021 has already kind of passed us quickly, but 2022 is going to be the year. Uh, and Bill's going to share with us a couple different tips of things that you should look for or do or implement. So, Bill, I'm going to let you start. What's your first tip that you feel business owners need to implement today? Sure. So I think that the, the really the most important thing um, is, especially, you know, in the beginning of, beginning of the year, you know, is to make sure everything is consistent. And by meaning, you know, what I mean by that is that, if it comes down to every time your, your company name, your address, your phone number, the description, uh, and, you know, listing of a list of products and services or that you offer, they all need to be consistent, not only on your, you know, from, you know, so anything that that's of that that's mentioned on your website, I would also make sure, you know, your Google business profile, which was, formerly Google My Business, but Google Business Profile has the same, you know, same uh, name of your company, the same address. Uh, and if, you, you know, it comes down to it, even if it's a suite number, whether or not you spell out the word S-U-I-T-E, you know, suite 100 versus S-T-E space 100, you know, every place possible, um, you know, if you, it needs to match up. And so it's that consistency because, you know, the search engines, you know, there's, they're not, uh, 
the search engines actually are, you know, still using computers and bots and so forth. And so the only way we can make sure that that they understand that this company that's the website is the same as the Google business profile is the same as this, you know, a company listing on LinkedIn is the same as the better business bureau listing and so forth that that's how they kind of understand your company and your listing. And so the more consistent we can be with every, you know, with all the listings and everything where we're mentioned, that's, that's going to be better. So I have a quick question kind of, for you. I have a ahead. quick question for you. Yep. So there are companies out there who have moved two or three different times and they still have listings under the previous addresses and they have tried to change those addresses yet there's, um, only, well, I shouldn't say only one, but there's a company that you have to pay to do that. And not a lot of these companies have the money to be able to pay somebody to fix those uh, address listings. Is there a way to get around that? Or do you end up having to pay somebody to do that for you? Well, I mean, you know, there's two parts to it. There's the manual part where actually you are, you know, actually go, having to log into an account at, you know, at yellow pages and change, you know, um, and, and then, and then changing the listing and, and so forth. Um, there's, you know, there's, that's, some of it is manual work. Um, and, you know, obviously if you're doing it yourself or you're paying somebody, you know, to, uh, you know, to, to log in and create the account and do all that, um, you know, that, that certainly, cost time and cost money. Um, there are some organizations that have partnerships that have essentially the API, you know, an API access where they can change it in one place. And then it's, it's kind of changed everywhere. Um, and, you know, who, and, and there's, there's also other, um, some basic directory websites, um, uh, that, you know, that provide data, of you know that name, address, and phone number to a lot of other a lot of other places. Uh, what I would be more concerned about, though, is essentially is the ones that are showing up more often than not. But than not. So if you have an old address, you know, putting that address in Google and just fixing or trying to fix the first the one you know the ones that are more prominent, the ones that are you know, showing up on the first page, the first five, the first 10 or so listings. Those are the ones that, you know, obviously are, are a little bit more powerful. And so they show up, you know, in, in, in the Google results a little bit, you know, more frequently. Um, so those would be, you know, typically the ones. But That's great advice. Great, great advice. At the same advice. time, we kind of get into, so the ultimate, you know, the, the, the most uh, important one is obviously the ad name, address, phone number on your website. Mm -hmm. And so what you can do is you can use things like, you know, you can obviously on your contact page, you'd have your name, address, phone number, um, or your contact info. And then we can use schema markup code, which also uh, we can put on, you know, on the pages. And um, that gives, you know, the same, the name, address, and phone number. So we want to be that, be consistent there. <coughs> so having it on your website, and then also there's a schema code that says that they're called same as. And so what you can do is you can say on your website, you can basically look at the code and say, okay, well, our website, this is our name, address, phone number, and this, this is our website. And we're also the same company as this company mentioned on, um, on, you know, the LinkedIn profile and on the BBB and, and so forth. And so you kind of, you know, the, the most important one is, is your website. And then from there, you can actually tell, tell the search engines that we're the same company as these other listings. So that's what I would focus on. If you do have multiple, you know, addresses from pre, you know, previous, really there's, you know, other than, you know, other than contacting, 
you know, that website, firing off an email or, or contact form and, and, you know, asking them to change it um, somehow. Um, there are some, you know, there are services out there you can pay. It's just a matter of, okay, well, it, you know, how much is your time worth and, and so forth, um, you know, and, and how many wrong listings are there out there? Right. Oh my God. That was like, um, I wish I had a light bulb and people could see it going off because you just gave one of the biggest golden nuggets that I've heard in a long time. And you may have said this to me before, and I may not have understood it, but I certainly understood exactly what you just said with the schema and letting other websites know that you are the same as. I mean, to me, that was like the biggest golden nugget that anybody can take out of here. And if you don't understand it, then go to your agency. They'll understand it. And if they're working on your website. But, uh, oh my gosh, Bill, that was like a major golden nugget. So sure. do you so have... there's so one thing that's, that's related to this is the knowledge graph. And so there's uh, there's basically a database, if you will, that of entities. And an entity is you know a a essentially a person, a you know a a person, place, or thing. And um, sometimes you know like a concept might also be an entity. But when it comes down to our business, there's two things we want to have. You know, so there is a, this knowledge, they call it the knowledge graph. And the knowledge graph is basically, like I mentioned, is a big database of pe you know, people's names, um, company names, and, uh, and, and uh, it all, there are also uh, locations. Um, Dallas, for example, would be, you know, w w is part of the, you know, ha has information of the knowledge graph and so forth. And so essentially what, so we do have, as part of the Google search results, we have our Google My Business or a Google Business Profile listing. And so that's obviously important for someone who has, you know, physical location where, cu you know, customers come to our location um, and do business. Um, but if you don't, you know, if everybody's working from home or you're a virtual company or, you know, you, you don't want to really necessarily publicize your address or you don't qualify for that, you know, Google listing, the next step is to, is to try and get this knowledge graph. So some companies, like if you were to, you know, um, look for um, Target or Walmart, you know, there will be a local listing, the Google business profile, but there also will be a separate knowledge graph listing. And so that is actually um, tied in to this same as. And so, you know, where, where we're tying basically prominent websites um, that provide information for the big knowledge graph database. Um, this knowledge graph database, Google uses it, um, uh, Microsoft Bing uses it, and so forth. And so you, you know, you will see uh, this knowledge graph if you search for certain, you know, companies, or if you search for uh, 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 people, um, certain people will have a knowledge graph entry if they're, you know, if, you know, they're a prominent, uh, you know, CEO of the company, for example, um, they will typically have somebody you'd think would have, you know, a Wikipedia, Wikipedia page, uh, Wikipedia is actually, uh, you know, very much uh, a contributor to the not this big knowledge graph database that all the search engines use. And so we want, you know, one of the goals should be um, for your for any company is to get a knowledge graph entry, and that means that basically you're you're listed in enough prominent places, uh, and that that they, th you know, that basically you have much enough information about your company to warrant, you know, uh, having a knowledge graph entry. And so, for example, you can get a BBB listing, a, you know, crunchbase.com, golden.com, wikipedia.org, you know, a lot of those, uh, if you have a listing there, that will get you this, you know, coveted, um, not, you know, knowledge graph entry. Uh, I could go on, you know, a, a, a lot, you know, for, for hours on how to get into the knowledge graph and, and, you know, and, and so forth. But, you know, there's something that's, you know, definitely in 2022, 
that you want to understand a little bit more about the knowledge graph and how that is different than the Google by business or Google business profile listing. And that's actually also different than Google ads, obviously, and the, you know, and the organic natural um, search results. Well, I remember you talking about the knowledge graph several months ago, maybe it was a year ago, I don't know, a couple years ago. Um, and I remember you just getting into it. You were so excited to tell us about it at DFW SEM. Sure. And um, so I guess that was probably a couple of years ago, right? Two, three years ago? I mean, it has been around. I mean, you know, it has been around um, and since, gosh, probably, you know, 2010, 2011 at least, you know, it's been around. But now what's happening is, is that, you know, in my opinion, Google is, you know, for example, they were, for years, a lot of their algorithm relied on links. And so what happened, you know, so you had to have good links from other websites to your website in order to show up in Google's results. And so what happened is, is we've, SEOs have gamed that system. Um, you know, they've bought links, they've traded links, they've you know, there's, um, and, and so forth. And so Google wants to get away from links as a part of major part of their algorithm. Um, so since we now have AI and, 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 you know, nat you know all, all these, you know, they're understanding language a lot more, they're relying on things like the knowledge graph and, um, schema markup code and information, um, in order to, you know, um, rank our web pages and our websites a little bit better. And so the more information we can give them, the more we, you know, we can be in the knowledge graph or, you know, have our employee, prominent employees, our CEO, our CFO, our, you know, um, you know, the, the business owner, um, you know, listed in the knowledge graph, you know, the, the more we can do that, the more information we're getting, and so, and we're putting it out there for the search engines to understand our websites and our, what we're about and so forth. Um, that's how we're going to be, you know, seeing rankings um, evolve, you know, evolve and, uh, you know, as Google kind of gets away from just from links, if you will as a part of the algorithm. Well, I think a lot of that has become very spammy and that's probably why Google wants to get away from it because, yes, you know, they get tired definitely. of the spam. You know, there's, there was, and I used to fight it all the time in the garage door business because, you know, we were the slimiest and Google hates garage door companies and they hate locksmiths and they hate, you know, several of the companies because there's so much spam and, and sliminess out there that they get probably tired of fighting it all. And uh, sure. so they have to figure out ways to do things better. I mean, like we do in business, right? We have to figure out ways to do things better. So um, I, I just hope that you guys are listening and, and taking notes on this because he is like so knowledgeable and I hope that you follow his advice. I didn't listen to it two or three years ago, but I'm hearing it again. I'm listening. Um, I'm going to go get myself on that knowledge graph somehow and uh, figure it out and make it happen because I want people to know who I am and what I can do for you. So um, sure. what, with that being said, Bill, we're going to take probably just a quick little break here and, um, and we will be right back and then we get to share what your treasure is. I'm so right. excited to hear what your treasure is. So we'll yep. be right back. Hi, this is Bill Hartzer, and I've got, as you can see here, I've got my official FBI hat on. And the reason why I have this on is because what I recommend is that you do an investigation of your own online presence. And this could be actually just by going to Google and Bing and going to um, especially also Yahoo and DuckDuckGo and some of these search engines and doing a search for an investigation of your name. And in that fact, what I recommend is investigating all of the search results and all of the results that show up because you definitely want to have positive results show up when someone searches for your name and does an investigation of you and your name. 
Hi, everyone. We are back with Bill Hartzer and Hartzer Consulting on Hidden Gems of DFW Video Podcast. I am Chris O'Connor, your host, and now it's time for the treasure chest. Now, I'm going to open this treasure chest, and we're not going to see anything pop out, but Bill's going to tell us what this treasure is, and he just kind of alluded to it during our commercial break, and now I've got chills, sure. and I'm all excited to hear about it. So, Bill, tell us what your treasure is. So my treasure is actually, uh, it's, it's, the name is actually the Canton Artesian Well, okay? And so we're all familiar with, uh, with water, you know, Ozarka water and, and, you know, that being the big, you know, one of the big brands of, of um, water that, you know, we, we buy in the supermarket. Um, and in fact, the Ozarka actually gets their water from several different springs, underground springs that are located, you know, actually um, kind of in East Texas in the, there's a, there's an area where uh, from, from Canton, Texas down to, through kind of the Cedar Creek Lake area te in Texas, where there are some, uh, there are some wells. And they literally get their get the spring water from uh, from those you know from those underground springs um, that are there you know um, just e you know east of Dallas. And years ago, there was a, a landowner who left their his particular well um, to the city of Canton, and his you know and and. He, he stipulated and that he was giving this well, um, but everybody and the public had to have free access 24 seven to get free spring water from, his, from that well. And so the Canton Artesian well has been running constantly um, for, gosh, we've been getting, going there and getting you know, uh, getting water from that well since, uh, you know, for well over 20 years. Wow. And you basically just know, need to know where the, where it is. You drive up, there's sometimes a line, but people will, um, you know, you bring your five gallon bo bottles or your one gallon jugs or any kind of, you know, any kind of container. Um, and you fill up, you know, fill up your, you fill up water. We, have an, an office cooler essentially. Um, and we take the five, you know, 10 or 20 different um, five gallon buck, five gallon bottles and we fill them up. Wow. So that is really a, I would say <coughs> the a hidden gem of DFW because, you know, it's uh, just south um, of the Canton first Monday trade days, which is in itself a hidden gem you know, for, for shopping. Yes. And, um, around, you know, on the hol you know, holidays. Oh, and, year, or, really? you know, really? Every uh, first Monday. But as you, yeah, ev anyway, so even if first Monday's not going on, you can drive out and bring your five gallon bucket or bring, uh, you know, water, water jugs or whatever, you know, uh, gallon containers. Uh, and, and literally just, just, go fill up and some of the best you know it's it's the best drinking water around it's uh, it's completely free um, and those are they those are the same spring and the same you know uh, the same underground springs as our Ozoka, our Ozarka water um, that we buy in the store Oh my gosh, that is such a gem. I love that. So Do you know how many times the, I've been to Canton? Yeah, so didn't know that? So if you search for the Canton Artesian Well, you will find it. Um, there, it actually has a Google uh, prof, you know, business profile listing and the address um, is there and you can get direct, you know, um, just do your Google Maps and go right to the well. Wow. 24-7, um, anytime um, you can go. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. I am so very excited because I love going to Canton. Um, I don't go, I used to go every month about a year ago. I was working out there. I wish I would have known. I would have come home with great water every week, but, um, you learn something new and something awesome every single day. Yeah. I mean, you know, now, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, I have, uh, you know, water here. Uh, I've got, you know, spring water. I've always got, 
you know, a jug of water with me uh, and, you know, just, and, and that's, you know, whether or not you're, you know, you're feeding your dogs, cats, farm animal, animals, or, or, you know, livestock with it, or just great drinking water. Uh, it's nice to have. And, and um, like I said, every, maybe every two months we would drive, you know, drive up there uh, and fill up and uh, five gallon, you know, our five gallon container, you know, waters. Um, and then we had the, uh, the office cooler and everything uh, worked out great. That's so, awesome. Well, you know, Colorado has a lot of great spring waters too. So yes, exactly. I, um, yep. I remember going to a lot of those springs and getting water from those springs when I lived there, but that was way sure. back in the eighties. So that was a long time ago. So, wow, that was a fabulous gem. I love that gem. And I hope that all of you are able to write that down and, and go there and check it out. So in conclusion, we've talked about NAP, name, address, phone number, how imperative. Yep. That has been something that has been spoken about since I learned about uh, SEO and uh, making mm -hmm. sure that you know, S-U-I-T-E or S-T-E, everything is exactly the same everywhere you go. Um, you taught me about the knowledge graph many years ago that I completely forgot about until today, which I won't forget about again. And um, there's so much, what would be one other item that you feel that you want to share with people that you think they should do? You know, I think there are uh, ways, uh, you know, there are some free tools like the Screaming Frog SEO Spider that will give you, you know, up to 500 pages. You know, I think that, you know, what, where you can crawl your own website and just look for errors because I think that, you know, when you, you know, when somebody clicks on a link on your website and it goes to an error page, you know, or a redirect or some, you know, something like that, uh, you know, the, the Screaming Frog gives you uh, suggestions. There's also one called Site Bulb. But I think, you you know, you can definitely, you can crawl and, and look at your, you know, uh, uh, your own website and see and look for errors. And I think just, just generally speaking, cleaning up, you know, those errors. Um, you know, there there's two things, cleaning up those errors. And I'll add one more is making sure your, your website loads very quickly. So rather, you know, the biggest issue there is having large images. You know, so, you know, if we take a photo with our phone, even with our cell phone of the outside of our, you know, of our business and we put it on the website, you know, it might actually now our, our iPhone or Android, you know, it takes a two or three meg or even more um, big photo. And that file size kind of needs to be optimized for the internet. So that when somebody goes to your website, that everything loads really quickly. And so the faster you can get everything to load, uh, you know, in theory is, is, is um, going, to, going to help. And so just trying to fix and clean up errors and then making your, you know, your website looks good on your mobile phone. It loads quickly uh, and, and so forth. And so... Like I said, uh, those are probably, that's probably three things there, but, you know, that's something that, you know, even if you're not too technical, you can actually go and, and look at your own website on the, you know, on your phone and browse it and see if it's easy to, to use. That's one of the issues uh, that really is, is important nowadays that, uh, you know, make sure your phone, your, your website loads quickly and, but it actually works on your phone. What a great tip. And I think that's so imperative because I do that all the time with the clients that I have. I, I use my phone more than I do my desktop. I mean, I fix things and work things on my desktop, but I check everything on my phone and I scan through my phone to make sure that it looks good, that it's readable, sure. that it's responsive, that it's doing what you want it to do because more and more people are going to their phones and using only their phones. They're not even using iPads or desktop much anymore. It's mostly phones because the phones are getting so sophisticated. 
I have clients in the YouTube realm and um, they do videos and I do their thumbnails for them. Well, it might look really good on the computer, but then when I put it on my phone, it's like, oh, I can't even read that. It's got to be bigger yeah. letters, bigger yeah. words, shorter. You can't have long description, you know. So absolutely, that is a fabulous tip to give people is look at it on your phone. And do you like your website on your phone? If you don't, fix it, change it, or have the agency who's working mm -hmm. on it fix it and change it. Check yeah. everything on your phone. It's such a great great tip. So this is the part that I never like, and it's getting time to close the show. But I want people to know, how can we find you, Bill? I mean, maybe I've got some celebrities watching that are having some challenges with what they're doing, and or sure. the Knowledge Graph, or their websites, or whatever. How can we reach you and, and find you out there? other than in Colorado. Well, certainly, you know, you can put my name in Google because, you know, Bill Hartz or H-A-R-T-Z-E-R and you'll probably, you know, find me just about, you know, in a lot of different places. Um, you know, I, I, I uh, my main website is my last name, Hartzer.com. And so that's, where I'm, you know, primarily um, I can be reached through. I do have a blog um, where I, gosh, I've been blogging on that web, you know, on my BillHartzer.com since, around 2001 or so. And so there's, you know, two or 3,000, you know, blog, blog posts and so forth um, on there as well. But um, hartzer.com makes it easy or just just uh, Google my name and uh, I'm sure you can find me. I'm telling you, I just wrote his name out and there he was, number one, boom, all over the place. So if he doesn't understand SEO, then I don't know who does because he is number one everywhere you go. And he's got lots of information out there. There, He does some of the best blogs and he teaches you how to do some of these things. Yep. His most recent blog was about um, uh, disavowing links and uh, what was the name of it? Disavow and something. Anyways, he yeah, showed just disavowing you. Disavowing links and find, you know, finding, the, finding websites that just, you know, are low quality that linking to you that might have an impact, you know, on your, your rankings. Um, if it's an off topic um, website that's linking to you, you know, you can tell the search engines to ignore this particular link. Um, and, you know, so that could be helpful to, uh, to many, you know, to many of us. Well, um, you know, I want to say, Bill, that is extremely helpful because you did that for us before I left the previous company. And how many bad links did we have? Holy moly. I, I don't even remember. It was over a thousand. It was crazy. Um, but it was something that had never been checked in 13 years ever. So yeah. I remind you guys, you want to check those things too, but I would follow Bill. I would listen to his podcasts. If you're a DIY and you want to do it yourself, then he will definitely help you by watching his podcasts. Um, if you want to get in touch with him, you know how Bill Hartz are. You can't. Yeah, and any any basic questions, just um, you know, just feel free to uh, shoot me an email, uh, and I will do my best to help out. Yes, he always does. He always answers my questions, and I'm thrilled. And he's very fast about it. Just want you to know that. But unfortunately, it is time for us to uh, end the show. Yeah. But I just want everybody to know. I want you to always remember that you are insanely valuable. And despite the labels of doubt that you have about yourself and created by outside people and experiences, that you can do this. You can do this. And if you need help, I'm here. Bill's here. Ask for help because we can make you successful. That's what I'm here for you to do. And also, don't forget to subscribe and like what you've seen today because I'm telling you, I am so grateful for you, Bill, more than you can ever understand for coming on to my video podcast today. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching and listening to Hidden Gems of DFW with Chris O'Connor. Don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to connect with me. I love hearing your successes.